Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Select Board of the Town of Sunderland, and we are also joined this evening by the Finance Committee. Finance Committee? You're going to call themselves to order? Absolutely. So we have three of us present. We have quorum, so I'll call us to order at 635. All right. We've got 635. We're in order. We are going to continue our, with our budget presentations tonight. This is usually when we get the uh, the town clerk, the assessors, the treasurer collector, and the board of health. So, treasurer collector's handling town clerk tonight, right? Or are you going to work with the town clerk? I think she's on. She's on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wendy's on. Wendy's okay. On. Yeah. So let's start with square. the uh, assessors. <laughs> assessors, do you want to make your presentation? Uh, sure. Jim, you want me to take point on this? Yeah, I'll take. Take point on the uh, okay. 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 Uh, so the assessors, um, basically nothing too uh, extravagant this year uh, with level of funding on our general expenses. Um, we're down. Uh, we cut about twelve hundred on the computer support. Uh, level funded on our tax and lot updates and. Uh, cut down on uh, valuation uh, reval services. Uh, since we just did a reval this past year, we don't need to uh, budget the same amount. Um, and so we're good for five years on that. Um, the one thing that the assessors uh, put in was uh, for a 3% raise on both the board and myself. Um, and again, that's uh, based on uh, pay increase and cost of living added. Um, so that's sort of where we're at. So last last year last year we had you had some extra money because of your. Uh, um, the revaluation, right? That is correct, yeah. Uh, we had to go a little bit. Uh, they had asked uh, last year for uh, a sizable increase um, so that they could do the uh, full field review for the town. Um, and that was a good chunk of change. Um, I don't have the exact figures here in front of me, but uh, I know that was a good portion of the, the 8,500 was, was uh, part of the uh, full field review. Okay, so under that line item, you're requesting six thousand instead of the uh, eighty-seven fifty. That's correct. Correct. Yep. All right. And and how and how do you specifically use that now for with your valuation vendors? Um, so that basically is for uh, Lord Bishop to help with. Uh, Set the values and um, any tax rate, uh, tax recapitulation, recapitulation uh, forms that we have to do in the fall. Um, so we basically, the, I guess the, the assessors have always hired out, uh, hired Roy uh, to come in and, and do uh, sales analysis and, and check our values are in line with everything. And um, he does his thing and sets the tax rate for us. And then he also, um, should any uh, abatements come in, he also stands by the values. He supports, you know, he, he will uh, give us support for the values. Okay. Crystal? Yeah, and this year, this is Jim um, Kowalik. Um, we've gone down 2750 with the um, vendor rebel, and um, Roy's huge with us helping us out, and um, you know, he got he got all the bills out on time, helped us get the bills out on time, and he had very little um, questions regarding increases in property values. So um, we want to continue with Roy on board, and um, he just helped the town out a lot and supported us out. Okay, Jimmy. Thank you. Crystal, David, any questions? No, no, I don't think so. Finance committee? Oh, you don't want to pick apart this budget? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good one, you know. It's got four or five line items. This is perfect. There's some negatives <laughs> in there, 
I the, love that. All right. All right. Jeff, thoughts, comments? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I would just mention, uh, um, since Dave hasn't been through this process yet, that um, the personnel committee also reviews uh, employee wages for um, non-contract, non-union employees. So um, I don't know if the Board of Assessors and, and the Personnel Committee has not made their recommendations yet to the Select Board, but I don't know if you want to, um, once you see that, perhaps reconsider um, the, the, the wage adjustment and COLA um, for, for Dave. Um, hopefully we'll have that in next week or in two, two weeks, I think. Two weeks. Um, but I, I just wanted to mention it because uh, it, it may be different from, from what was recommended in this budget. Right, yeah, we just, um, the board wanted to just, you know, put a number out there yep. uh, as a request and, you know, uh, either it'll be, you know, yes or no, the worst, you know, is no, so, um, but they wanted to just throw it out there and see what they get. Yep. So. Yep. Okay. All right. Without hearing any other questions, seeing you, I don't. If now, if you're at home on the Zoom and you have a question, uh, hit the little uh, hand signal and we'll get to you. Uh, I'll look up every once in a while, and uh, either Jeff or uh, Chris will kick me under the table if I miss. Uh, I'm gonna kick miss. you just for the hell of it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I should. I shouldn't have offered that up. But yeah, they'll 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 kick me under the table if I I miss it. But uh, um, if you have any question, just just little hit hit the little hand button and we'll get to you. So without hearing any more assessor, do you have anything else that you'd like to tell us or want to talk about? Um, I I don't. Um, things are actually kind of quiet right now. Even with the uh, rebuild that we just did. Um, Abatements have been very quiet, um, knock on wood. we got one, one week left for people to apply, uh, and uh, it's been really quiet on that end, so um, I'm kind of happy. Um, and, you know, everyone must be, you know, either not pleased or just, uh, you know, content with their values. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, everything looks good. So uh, I think we're, we're in a good spot, so. Thank, thank you, uh, David. Okay. Thank you, assessors. Uh, town, okay. town clerk. Okay, here I am. Uh, I, uh, I guess my uh, budget for a town clerk is pretty stable at um, level services and for election and registrars. There is an increase because there's a primary and a state election. And also, it is actually cheaper for me to send out for the census to be done, about $300 cheaper. Uh, so this line also includes $1,000 for postage, which is usually the postage comes out of the postage line item under Heather's budget. Pretty straight board uh, budget, huh, town clerk? Yeah. Okay, anybody have any questions about the town clerk's budget? I see you got your uh, wage salary uh, open right now. Um. Yeah, I, I usually have always done whatever increase the rest of the employees get. Can can I can I ask you uh, a favor, town clerk? Sure. Can can I have you put a number in there and and you can ask Jeff what the what the a, a number is right now? Can I ask you to put that in there so that we don't lose it like we have in the past? Sure. Would that be fair? That seems fair. All right, I, because I, that's happened before. Yeah. We don't want it to happen again. No, we don't. No, because town clerks can make us all go to jail. 
And, by the way, I, I do put a, a note in my overall spreadsheet uh, for, for all personnel that check this once the personnel committee recommendation comes in and yeah. in case, sure. but Let, it's always good to... If, if you guys yep. could just work together tomorrow or whenever and just put a number in there so we, we, we can have something. And we, under, we understand that you're just following and you know we'll, we'll adjust it if we have to or whatever, okay? We okay, just, thank you. We want to be consistent. All right, I don't have any other questions. Uh, David, Crystal? Yeah. All set. Finance? Wendy, I think we're all set with you, if you unless you have something to tell us. No, uh, I'm good. All right, thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Good night, Wendy. Have a good night. Heather, treasure collector? You guys can ask me anything you want. I've got, um, I don't know, things are pretty busy in the office. I got all the tax bills out. Their payments are actually coming in very steadily. Um, excise tax bills are going out in another week. The first commitment, which is a big one. Um, other than that, I don't think I have anything that's too earth shattering, unless you guys see something. So, Treasurer Collector, just as a question, how are we doing on our outstanding? We we don't have too many outstanding loans now, do we? No. Nope. Three. So we're all paid off with the school and the public safety and the uh, library, right? Correct. And the the three are the fire engine, the Riverside Park borrowing. Yep. Um, and the 120 North Main? Correct, yep. There was a little bit of an increase in the insurance because that, as everything has gone up, but that's to be expected, I guess. And your unemployment seems to be good? We don't have to, the numbers is consistent? I think we're pretty good, yeah. I was a little concerned because of the whole COVID thing, but... We look good, dear? Yeah, I think things seem to level out. So, so talk about health insurance a little bit, can you please? Okay. So, okay. so have, have you gone out and looked at other, other plans, Heather? I actually have not. Okay. Um, if that's something that you would like me to do, I absolutely can. It can, because we're with Maya right now, right? Yep. Um, so, all right, so we use, we use these words. My is the Massachusetts Interlocal um, Insurance, insurance Agency. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Th those guys. I'm familiar. Yeah. So, um, so th in the past, we have used the Hampshire Collaborative. Yep. And back when Governor Baker, I think, first took office, they extended uh, the GIC the, mm -hmm. to, to uh, have use or use of or towns could get into GIC it was usually just a state mm -hmm. so so I don't know if you need to you know look at the Hampshire look at the uh, um, GIC yeah, okay and, and again just just so that we can we can you know see what's out there sure. but my my has been treating us pretty well the last yeah they seem pretty consistent yeah okay does that sound okay yeah. Yep. Um, big increase in county retirement this year. Right. 
Medicare, pretty even. Yep. Okay. And OPEB, okay. Good. Any questions? On all sides. Finance Committee, thoughts? Uh, the increase in health insurance, is that driven solely from an increase in premiums or also more people coming on to the plan? Um, it, quite an increase this year, I thought. Yeah. Um, and I usually factor a little bit for an increase, but it seems like, um, I don't think there's like large amounts of people coming in, but you have, the turnover's been interesting <laughs> sure. this past year, so. So it sounds like maybe a combination of yeah. both. Yeah, maybe something out there. I know like, the teachers in Sunderland health insurance and, and the employees of Sunderland are much lower than the other towns and there's been a movement to try to balance it. Is that what we're talking about here with the health insurance? That's a big difference between say Deerfield Elementary School's faculty salary is the extra health insurance they get. So is that part of the race? Is that still a discussion going on trying to balance the towns? Yeah. Um <coughs> turn it, huh? see it. Yeah, right side up. <laughs> oh, I just, just took it. Um I guess maybe one one step back is are teachers included in this line yes. item? Yeah. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit. I would assume so because it's a pretty big number for. Yeah. Just I, town employees. I think yeah, the teachers are included. In that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm I'm pretty sure that that's similar to past year increases. You know, the amount <coughs> year over year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we um, so I'm sorry, Joe. Answer, yeah, I, yeah, I know, like, because I'm also on the school council, and Jessica, Jessica um, Corwin, Corwin, yeah, had that big PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if you've all seen it, but showing the differences between Deerfield, Conway, Sunderland, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's why sometimes we lose teachers, and it's not just the teacher, any employee in town, right? Yeah, has that. Mm -hmm. Higher um, employee contribution. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. We actually raised it. What was it? Two years ago. What's that? We raised our percentage. Uh, was it two years ago? Yeah, it was like We're a 60. sixty forty split in two thousand and nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. 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 So, so it's it's an interesting is um, back in it's been a little while now. Sunderland was fifty fifty. And we stayed, we were at 50 50 for, for many years. And then I'm going to say 10 years ago, it, it could have been less, plus or minus, we went to 55%. So it was 55 45. And then a couple of years ago, it, it, it came through initiative from the board that we go to 60 40. And the reason was is that you're you're right. Some towns, Deerfield, like it's sixty five percent. Some other towns are seventy five percent. One other town, what I think one town pays ninety percent with a um, with a cert, one of their certain plans. They they play they pay ninety percent. Mm -hmm. So we we wanted to we wanted to up we we felt the sixty forty was getting to where we thought was an equitable, which was 60, we thought 65, 35 was, we haven't got to the 65 yet. We haven't had the resources to go to that point, but that's where we wanted to go to. So hopefully that's what we're looking at doing in the future. Okay, good, thank you. And, and there is discussion at the personnel committee. Um, Ms. Corwin has presented the information and they're talking about, um, whether or not to make a recommendation. Um. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Yep. So, so, but, but for us, it's it's always looking at looking at the total what the total cost would be, right. and 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 there's also a a break point where then you start maybe picking up people that spouses are carrying insurance and that's that's we don't we don't know what that line is i i, I don't think it's 65 35 but that's one of the things that that we have to consider because all of a sudden you could see a hundred thousand dollar increase because so we we try to when we when we have the reserves to cover not just what we anticipate but the unanticipated areas all right so heather if you could get if you could get some numbers to compare and and, and, and inside of your in, inside of your your health numbers it do you know if you're you're looking at the addition of one or two or three pro plans usually 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 we have it a little bit higher thinking that we may pick up a plan or two mm -hmm. is that what is that what yeah. this these numbers reflect there's a couple built in okay yeah it looks like yeah you have two family HMO plans on your yeah. Yeah. yeah budgeted in okay all right any question any additional questions further no I don't see anything up on the screen. Okay. All right, Heather, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Next up is the uh, Board of Health. Bruce, you there? Here twice, actually. <laughs> yeah, you do. Uh, I'll I'll uh, kick out your second. Oh, thank you. Yeah. They're working on you, Bruce. Yeah, you do. So, uh, I don't think they can hear us. Hold on. Let me. Hey, you're logged in twice. He did this. Oh, oh, see the web thing's working now. Can you bounce that extra one, Jeff? There we go. Um, and then Bruce, I'm just going to kick out your second instance. And that should fix it. Uh, there you go. Oh, oh that's renaming that remove. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's try it now, Bruce. Okay, better? Yeah, much better. Thank you. I always, I always wondered. I didn't know it was that easy to get rid of. Just remove Bruce Bennett. Well, the leader. Bruce. The leader. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> Bruce, you see that? Don't you wish you could just shut down that easy <laughs> I couldn't believe it. it. They just went to Bruce Bennett, delete, and gone. You were gone. Yeah. All right. All right, what do you got there, Mr. Bruce? What do you want to know? What are you going to do with your budget, my friend? Yeah, our budget's about the same as usual. Um, the only thing is, is we're asking for a uh, for stipend for all the Board of Health members. And that's probably due to uh, the COVID, the work we've been doing with COVID, have more responsibilities. And uh, basically, that's, a, that's the voters vote on that without elected officials. And we're just requesting that be put on 
with the other elected officials. Anything else you want to ask? Um. So we, we, we have a we have a so under the board of health clerk wages that's where you're 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 seeking the uh, the uh, stipends for the the chair and the and the uh, board members right that's correct so should we we sh can we we probably should take those and put those in separate items because you guys are elected. Okay. Yeah, they should be put where they put the other elected officials, Tom. We, we vote on all the elected officials right. in one item, and that should be included in that item. Yeah, because you're, you're going to have to go. Out of our budget. Yeah, you're going to have to go there. Okay. So it, right. would be, it would be uh, Board of Health clerk wages and a Board of Health uh, stipend or whatever you call it yeah. for elected officials. So, so ha have have you have you looked at uh, a town nurse, Bruce? Have you guys looked at that? We're we're, we're in the process. We we, we joined a collaborative with Greenfield, um, Montague, Deerfield, and Sutherland yeah. to do the contract tr tracing. Yeah. And we we do have a public health nurse, but she resigned. And we're in the process of getting a new public health nurse, and and I got to talk to Caitlin about that because I have some leads on that. Yeah. Um, I know I know there's there's someone that, from town that's working with the Senior Citizen Center in Deerfield, I believe. Yeah. That's and, what I was asking. And uh, that's what I'd like to, to talk about with Caitlin. See okay. See if we could get her on board. Okay. And that would that would handle all the town public health things except for COVID. Right. With a collaborative, we have a, a nurse on board, she just joined, that uh, will be doing all the COVID tracing for us. And also we're looking at hiring a epidemiologist that will keep the statistics for all that stuff. Um, so we'll have accurate figures of what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 w I was wondering about the, uh, the nurse, especially working over at the senior center. So... Right, right, and, and I, you know, I, I, we, we just, we're working on that right now. Tom. Good. And All hopefully, right. you know, this week we can try to figure something out. All right, thank you, Bruce. All right, anybody uh, questions? Yeah. David, pretty straightforward. You good. Crystal, I am good. Finance committee. Makes sense. I don't see any other questions for you. Uh, Board of Health, I see a hand up. I think that might be your... Jeff, how did you... I don't think that's a hand. The hand's yellow. I think that's yeah. Jeff's. Oh, that's the... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I guess we're all... Yes. Um, may I ask Bruce, um, what is the overall increase in the budget for the health, Board of Health that you're requesting this year over last um, it would basically be just for the wages for the uh, the stipend for the Board of Health members, which I believe is thirty two hundred dollars now. Thirty nine. Thirty nine. Thirty nine, Bruce. Thirty nine. Okay. Okay. That would be the only increase, and that's a new item. So, so Bruce, mo mostly, mostly your monies that you like on the Board of Health revolving, those are all from monies that you guys charge for fees and such, right? Correct. That's absolutely correct. And the, and the collaborative is working under a grant from the state. So basically that's, quote, free money from the state, what we're yep. paying for. Yep. And hopefully that grant continues. Um, you know, COVID gets down to a real low level. I imagine the state will stop that funding. Yep. Okay. And then we'll, we'll have to deal with it when that happens. So, so, so one of the things finance that's that's kind. We look at things that there are two segments of the of the budget. There, and we're talking about the expense side now, yeah. but there's also the revenue yeah, side, sure. and and we're not looking at the revenue side. We don't have those numbers up in front of us yet, but, yeah. and so, and that 
on this one, like done the revolve that sixteen thousand five hundred, yeah. that's basically paid or comes from fees and such that are charged. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, is the uh, the thirty nine hundred stipend is this one time or going forward? It'd be every year. Okay. Well, there's no benefits attached to that or anything else. Sure. Uh, and technically, it's approved annually at town meeting under under the water. That's correct. Article, so. That's correct. Like any other elected yeah. official. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. Jeff, is that it for? Uh, Groups tonight? Uh, is it for budget presentations this evening? Okay. Night. Tonight's an easy one, finance. I know. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a little. I'm sorry, can you um, just let me know who you are? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm Doc Bryan. I'm a reporter oh. with the reminder. Thanks. And I'm glad to meet you all. I've been watching on TV all these weeks. <laughs> 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 nice to be in person. All righty. All right, so so we're going to continue with our meeting. I don't know if you, um, I mean, you're more than welcome to stay, or if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Okay. So the next next thing I'd like to talk about is our minutes from last week. So minutes of January 18th. Can motion we accept the minutes from last week? Okay, we have a motion made and seconded Second. to accept as presented the uh, minutes of January 18th, 2022. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of acceptance of the minutes as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey 3-0. Okay. Next up. Jeff, you want to talk about uh, DLTA next? Sure. So right. every year um, the <coughs> Reg uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments receives uh, district local technical assistance um, grants and then goes out to the communities and says, well, how, how can we help you? Um, and so we formulate a response and um, we've reached out uh, to department heads and to um, neighboring communities to see what the priorities are and um, this year and basically we check off anything that we might want help with and then we list our top three priorities so the top three priorities and I'll say there are four um, are Senior services, um, senior centers, again, uh, that was our number one priority last year along with Deerfield and Waitley. And um, we were awarded funds to help with the needs assessment, which is a good segue. The needs assessment is out. So if you're a senior in Sunderland, uh, it's on our web page. There's a red alert box right on the front page. Um, you can fill it out. Or if you're having any trouble, you can give us a call. Um, but and, and Jeff, Jeff, one, one second, Jeff. The definition of senior is 50 and older. So if you are 50 and older, you should have received a mailing at home that that with the survey. Um, you you have two options. You can do the op. You can there's a if you haven't thrown it away, <laughs> uh, you can fill it out. There's a self-stamped addressed envelope inside there. You can put in that and can send it or you can go online. So if you are 50 years of age or greater, you're, you're encouraged to fill out the um, senior survey. And it's interesting is one of the questions basically do, is, do you consider yourself a senior? So. Yeah, and, and I think that no, the, no, the no, age group no, was no, broadened no. specifically because we, we want to be planning for the future and understand that these are the people who are also going to be using the senior center in the future. So Absolutely. please, please um, fill it out if you received it. 
or if you're 50 and over and didn't receive it and want to. The feedback's important. Um, the second priority was covert assessments. That's been on our list, I think, since Wait before listed. I got here. Yeah. And we are um, finally uh, on the list to have it done, hopefully, this summer. Um, the third priority was sh shared services um, for a grants uh, manager um, and specifically perhaps dealing with ARPA. Hopefully I'm having a, a further conversation with the COG um, probably looking like next week to talk about the potential for a shared position and we'll probably talk a little bit more about that during the ARPA discussion uh, in the next agenda item or two agenda items for now. Uh, and then the final one is the open space and recreation plan, which was approved and sent to the state in the fall. They finally get back to us and we got conditional approval. They gave us about nine areas that they wanted to strengthen the report. Um, and GLTA funds run out at the end of the year, so um, they're not allowed to use last year's um, open space and rec funds to complete it. And I said, this is small. Can we just <laughs> do it? And they said, well, why don't you apply for DLTA funds again? So um, I, I, if we are awarded that, it would be small, and hopefully they would be able to award the other three as well, or at least one of the other two, uh, one of the other three options. Um. <clears throat> okay. So, so when when we go through when you go through the DLTA, they they have a list. The FERCOG supplies a list, and and it starts with you know climate change adaptation and resilience, energy. Um, <clears throat> it goes on to economic development. We've also uh, checked off community economic development and as, as a priority in our town, provide technical assistance to advance the rapid recovery plan project that we have talked about in the past. Uh, housing planning implementation, um, we've been very lucky with, a, with the FERCOC working with us to <coughs> advance our housing plan. And there's actually not a lot of, there's not many uh, cities or towns in the state that actually have plans that are accepted by the state. So. We've been pretty good on that. Uh, we also have rural policy plan implementation, um, which is pretty important when you start looking at Chapter 90, because that's how we deal with our infrastructure. Um, and as many of you know, <coughs> if we have a replacing bridge roads, it's very expensive. Um, as we can witness by what <clears throat> one mile yeah. uh, one mile out here in front of on North Main Street was was two point three million about yeah. yep two point for a for a mile and five years of planning I, I hate to think of how many hours we spent in meetings about that one mile. It was, it was easier in the old days than just follow the goat paths. <laughs> you know. Anyways, um, municipal service sharing feasibility, um, and I, the human resource management. So uh, it's very important, Jeff. Yep. It, it's very important because you know, especially, especially in the um, fall time when school's starting and making sure everybody understands their available programs to them, it's pretty complicated. Municipal finance services, we've talked over and over again. Senior services, including the senior center, uh, where are we going in the future? And we're starting that. And water and sewer is regional public water supply opportunities and feasibility. Um, David or Crystal, do you have anything you want to add to that, or you think we should add? No, that's good. <clears throat> and 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 I'll go back to senior services, Jeff. If we could look at uh, regional elder service outreach, 
I personally, I think that's it's. A lot, there, there's a lot of people that we found that, and and hopefully it may be identified in the survey that are out there, but don't know how to out, don't know what services are available, and we need to outreach to those people that don't don't <clears throat> know, and we can bring get that information to them, you know, and just like the CDB grants, you know, you can. You can get a grant to fix your home, put in railings or walk-in bath or showers. People don't know that those grants are available out there. Yeah. And it's expensive. That, that, it is. Yeah. So. You also have the EV charging station implementation assistance checked off too on there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I know the Energy Committee has been looking at that a lot. and. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> trying to find the the right location where we can supply power fairly easily and it wouldn't detract from parking. Yep. Um, a lot of things to think about. Yeah. Yep. Um, so w would would shared services for like HR management, would you rather prioritize that over grants administration? Um, okay. You still I, I, again, you know, the 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 grant administration is is a critical. We we are finding in town that we that our town lives by grants, right? Well, kind of and, restructured state. Funding. And we're not alone. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of municipalities are finding that the state funding has gone from the unrestricted general government aid yep. to more grants um, and with reporting requirements and applications and all that so yes right and, and, and again I, I, I understand that this the state or the federal government wanting to report because they want to make sure that the money is being used properly mm -hmm. so I, I understand that but it just before the hard part was writing the grant but now it's not only writing the grant but it's trying to to produce the documentation that necessary once the grant is received so absolutely so yeah we need to continue that okay um, so we all set sending this forward as presented yeah yep. Jeff all set yeah all right yep. make it happen we'll make we'll, we'll make it and send it out if, if you would please okay all right what do you want to do, talk about? You want to talk about the housing plan tonight? Uh, I would, yes. What do you want us to talk about? So, uh, two weeks ago, yep. the um, FERCOG was in here, Megan Rhodes, talking, presenting the housing plan with the housing committee. Um, that was the public forum. Then last week, I think, no. The 11th, is that last week? Mm -hmm. Jeez. Um, the planning board voted to approve it. So this evening, um, and I think ba based on the comments, there was uh, some language added recognizing that uh, the town needed to um, make sure that, that as new units are getting developed that um, as we do continue to make sure that there's uh, adequate septic or sewer availability. Um, aside from that, there haven't been any changes to the plan. So unless the select board has comments that they'd like to see included, um, you can vote to approve it and then it would get submitted to the state um, and once they accept it, we will have um, cert uh, there are two different levels. There's certified plan and I'm forgetting what the other one is, but um, an accepted housing production plan for the next five years. Hey, you know, I, I, my, only, my only problem is that we, and again, this is more of a philosophical problem, is we spend all the time resources of putting together a plan and then the state won't support the plan. 
and 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 what I mean by that is that we understand. I, I think the plan is 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 very well presented, but when when somebody comes in to do a forty B, and we're saying we need a certain type of housing as reflected in our housing plan, it has no weight with them. And 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 that's to me that's a little it's. Sometimes you ask, why do you have a housing plan? If it, yep, and I, I think I, I'm not speaking for the state, but I will say there are other benefits to having a plan too. We get extra points on grant applications and things like that. Um, but your point is well taken that, that you would hope that um, that when the state looked at potential developments, especially 40 Bs in a community that has a plan, that they would. Um, make sure that the, the proposal meets the goals of the plan. I, I just think there's a lot in the, in the plan. The, the plan, there's some information that really needs to be read by somebody on the state before, but, and, and, and people in town need to understand what's in the plan also. Because there, you're, you, if you read the plan, it's 129 pages, so you don't read it in one sitting, at least I don't. Um, but if, if you if you read the plan, there, there's information that's in in the plan that it's it's worthwhile, and 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 you you see for us to be sustainable as a community and a state, you you, ha you have to have these various types of, and you can't have too much of one type or one or another. You you need a balance, and and the state also. I think, understand, and this isn't my, my original thought, it was the mayor of Northampton's, uh, back when I talked with Claire Higgins many years ago, is that in when someone was going through another 40B thing, but she, the town of Sunderland doesn't have the resources of a Northampton. Northampton doesn't, or didn't, or doesn't, did, at the time, didn't have a problem with some of the 40, 40B um, development that was going on because it had the resources. What it was asking for is a state to recognize that and help offset some of those costs. And so they just, you know, 40 be going to a place, a, a, you know, town or a city and not recognize that there's additional cost to offset that expenditure. So. I just, you know, it's fine that you tell, it's fine that you say that you have to have 10% of your, and we are, so for the next 10 years, we're all, we're, we've met that threshold. That being said, it still is not, it's not fair to all the communities. All right, I'm done pontificating. Uh, anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the housing plan. I have a second. <clears throat> And motion made, seconded to accept the housing plan as uh, presented. Please remember that this is the housing plan, that it's a plan, it's not a law. Um, so there's, if there's any uh, zoning changes or whatever, zoning change can only be enacted at town meeting. They can't be just voted on by the board and by the uh, planning board. So. All those in favor then signify by saying aye. Aye. Jeff three zero from the uh, from the board on the housing plan. Next up is your ARPA. Yes. So uh, capital planning committee. Okay, I can't zoom in so I can read it. Um, let me just make sure that there's nobody in the waiting room. Okay. Um, so in, in discussions with the Capital Planning Committee and at the Select Board, we've sort of talked about the use of ARPA funds, and I think the Capital Planning Committee, um, so I, uh, quickly talking about what, what I think I've heard through meetings, um, I think the Select Board in, in an earlier discussion had said, 
um, prioritizing public safety and education. Uh, the Capital Planning Committee, um, and, and I think both committee, uh, Select Board and Capital Planning Committee agreed that they thought that this is a one-time revenue source and should be focused on one-time needs versus ongoing expenses or operational expenses. Um, and so based on that information and having reached out to uh, the various departments, um, I put together a proposal. Um, so, the, and again, the, give an overview for people who may be watching at home, Sunderland is gonna receive about um, a million Eight hundred a uh, million dollars in eighty four million eighty four thousand. I don't know yes. how to say that yes. number. One million eighty four thousand. Uh, One million. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we've received about half of that five hundred and forty two thousand. We're going to receive another fifty percent um, probably in the spring of twenty two. Um, the funds are available. To be spent immediately it's like grant funding we just have to um, approve it and report on it so it doesn't need to be appropriated at town meeting um, so I, I wanted to try to we have a lot of capital needs in the town and so I think the Capital Planning Committee was talking about trying to reduce some of those capital needs. We also got a number of recommendations from community members um, about how to spend the funds. This is really this is really focused on internal operations. That doesn't mean that that's the right thing to do, but I wanted to give the select board something to react to, and um, hopefully I'll I brought something similar to the Capital Planning Committee meeting, which is tomorrow night, um, so that they can view it as well. But essentially, you heard last week from police and fire, um, seven defibrillators, a cruiser, uh, radio repeaters. Oh, I'm sorry, I should say one more thing, which is for people who weren't here last week or two weeks ago, um, originally we thought only about 350,000 could be spent on general government services. The most recent guidance, then uh, the final guidance from Treasury was that we can spend the entire amount on general government services. So we have a lot more flexibility. Um, so basically there were a lot of needs in uh, public safety and education and so um, I used the majority I think it was um, yeah 90 percent for those two so figure it's about nine hundred thousand dollars right um, so and and basically what I did is I took all the I'll call it low hanging fruit, the lower cost items, and said we can pay for those this year. Um, and the higher cost items, we would wait until the next tranche of funding would come in and have more discussion, probably because they're bigger ticket items and we want to make sure we're doing it right. Um, we can also have discussions about other ways we might be able to fund larger scale projects. Um, I'll also note that even though they're not on here, there are things that uh, that are coming down, big expenses. You heard the chief say maybe another fire truck in five years. Um, within that time frame, highway department is likely going to need a new, um, uh, I think, a, a one ton or a single axle dump and um, and a loader. So that's looking at, you know, another half of a million dollars there too. Um, so trying to take as much off the capital list as we can so that we can uh, not have to borrow those full amounts. Um, and so the schools had a couple of requests. Um, maybe some of them can come off after further discussion. But um, 
certainly dishwasher replacement, um, the PA system, and potentially a phone system upgrade, um, fixing some leaks and uh, a pressure regulator in piping. Well, that, that was that the repair leaks and uh, regulator the pressure regulator is in response to an actual failure at the school Correct. so yep. that those are those are basically costs that's already been incurred right right so i i their costs that have been incurred but we so at, at the end of this i'm proposing a how we approve yep. arpa funds and um basically asking that the, the select board approve them just so that there's uh, openness and and the public is aware of how we're spending the funds um there's the window replacement of the windows on the south side of the school which were the windows that were not replaced um when the roof was replaced about 20 In years ago 2003 um replacing a boiler some Gable and soffit repairs, uh, an oil tank leak detection and related repairs, and then the big ticket item is looking at a new roof. Um, and then other government services, I there was about 10% left. Um, so what, what I think, um, and, and looking at the first reporting deadline for ARPA, it's, I think, the day after town meeting or shortly thereafter. Um, so having some help. I Again, I may learn, and what it seems like it might be is all we have to do is write a narrative for general government spending, for revenue replacement, and say, here's what we spent it on. It's what government typically does. It's repairing a road. It's fixing having repairs at the school that's that's what we do um and if that's the case great we don't i i can do that um no problem but if it's more intense uh we want to make sure we get it right um also if we're doing any thing like um one of the things from the rapid recovery plan was talking about uh grants to small grants to businesses if we want to do something like that we would want somebody to administer that program um so you're talking about fifty thousand dollars to manage a million yeah and the hope would be that if we can find a, a shared person or if they which we've been talking to the cog about that would that would be ideal and that would go down this was what uh the rapid recovery planning um consultants had yeah. sort of suggested would be an annual price for a grants manager that being said um and no disrespect i i really enjoyed working with them you know they come from cambridge and and so that's probably a, a starting rate for a full-time grants manager in the boston area right. Wh whether we could find you know i I think it would be hard to hire somebody full time for under forty, <laughs> but um, somewhere in between. There. Yeah, that 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 would probably be the range. Um, and and that, again, that's for a full time person. If it's only reporting and tracking ARPA funding, we certainly don't need you know forty hours a week to do that. That, that could be five to ten. So you can drop you can drop the job description. We're gonna see, I'm gonna see how the meeting goes because my preference would be to have a shared position okay um right. but if it's looking like that's not possible and there are significant requirements then yes okay um and then listed other potential um ways to to spend those funds we talked about the front steps at the town office building we talked about the flooring um rapid recovery plan uh recommendations about small business assistance grants mobility study um what do you mean mobility study so uh this was something that the traffic consultants had recommended um for 116 and 47 which was to study not just 
traffic counts, but traffic speeds leading into the intersection as well as bicycle crossings and pedestrian crossings at the intersection. So more than a, a vehicle traffic study, but a full understanding of how the intersection works. And, and is, this, is this requested by the state or somebody else? This was a recommendation from the rapid from the subject matter experts to the rapid recovery planning consultants and the village center committee. Okay. Um, there are also some other capital requests from the highway and library that that I put on here, um, and then and then I. The memo goes on to talk about sort of the approval process. Again, I think major things, having the select board say, yes, this is in line with our plan, go ahead and spend. I also suggest, and I don't know if this is an awful idea, but uh, you know, <laughs> spending under $1,000, um, authorizing myself to make that decision for, hey, we're running out of COVID tests you know and we don't we find out on Tuesday morning do we wait until the next select board meeting to do that or right, it's under a thousand more. we need masks can we just you know some of those things um, and then I would I would talk to the select board uh, at the next meeting and say that I did this and and hopefully get your endorsement of that um, so I think at this point it would be helpful for me to refine the plan and then for the capital planning committee and their discussion tomorrow night to understand if this is on the right track, if there's anything that you say, hey, this we should find a different way to fund this or giving, you know, we no more than 50% should go to the schools and, and public safety should get bumped up or we really need, you know, the front steps on the town office building done or we really need to be buying tests and masks for residents and how set up a you know something like that that well it about. just 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 as uh the the roof replacement of the school i don't think should necessarily come from arpa the whole thing i i just think that that that's an investment that personally that that's an investment that um we as a town should look at, and, and at least for discussion, um, coming from the entire, you know, borrow that, borrow that money. I mean, you're looking at a half a million dollars. Right. Plus, it's a twenty, it's a twenty year, it's a twenty year. It's got a long life expectancy. It it, it is. Yep. And 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 maybe, maybe we really really what we really should do is look at that as a long-term capital expense and something that we yep. may consider borrowing for right now you're borrowing at you know half a percent you know three quarter percent or whatever and 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 when you're when you're talking about going out of the arpa doing basically 70 percent goes to the to the one building that's i i when there's so many other needs that we don't, we can't get to balance out the use of it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would, I would look at, I would look at, I, I right now, and, and again, maybe I can be con convinced otherwise, but I, I would think the ARP of, you know, five hundred thousand dollars for the roof is is a lot, right now. Okay. My my opinion, I. But but again, I think that's something that we we why we, that's why we talk about stuff like that, right? Yep, absolutely. All right. Anything else, Jeff? Um, I, I guess it, it, assuming that the capital planning committee agrees with that tomorrow night, um, next week, would you want me to come back? And you don't. You can look through the list and email me individually <laughs> before next meeting. Um, if there's anything from I, Appendix A has a laundry list of, of the recommendations or suggestions we got from the public. If there's anything you want me to add there, yeah. I assume town office building stairs and floors, since those were mentioned previously, would, would get in there, um, which we are, I'm hoping to get uh, estimates for those this week or next week. Okay. Um, 
So we've been talking about those stairs off and on for a little while. Yeah. I, I, I would also I would also look at yeah, that's fine now. I'll I'll talk to you about a couple other things. Okay. And and um I guess the last thing would be is the select board comfortable with um the process for approving the spending of like tonight do you want to say take a vote to spend ARPA funds to pay for the repairs at the elementary school for the um, pipes and is, is that an okay process and I, I, I you know I, I I think what I would like to see is that you bring it you know if there's an expenditure of money that you want to do you bring it to the bring it to the board introduce it to the board for comment have a week on week to talk about it and vote on it and if possible you know we got that we got a finance committee I would, I would i would i would pass it by the finance committee as well okay so then it's very transparent right and and then and then and, and i'm not you know and again the the eighteen thousand for the school that was in regard to an emergency that happened. I, I don't think that's a that's a a, a, a a difficult one. But for instance, all right. So let's say that you we want to progress on the on the the repeaters, right? Mm -hmm. Come here, come you know say okay, Tom, you know, as part of our our, our board, part of our our thing that we we identified the six radio repeaters been out gotten some prices this is what we have for pricing blah blah this and then you, you present it then we can ask questions or maybe get more research and then vote on it the following week does that sound mm -hmm. yeah fine crystal what do you think yeah i mean we've already looked at some budgets you know where some yep. of these items are actually listed on them yep does Absolutely. that start creating a big prop? And again, it doesn't. It, money is money. But does that start creating a big problem for them amending those budgets if we take the money from here? No. Well, because uh, uh, most of the time they, they, they don't give us they don't give us they don't give us uh, revenue. They, they give us expenses. So then it's yeah. up to us to find where the money comes from. Right. I I I think the what what I would like to do then is probably give you a lot of that information at the next meeting because doing it one by one is not going to allow the capital planning committee to plan a capital budget right it, it would take several months to get through a list like this so. well I, I'm saying one but but you could okay. you could present I don't you could present 20 things okay yeah I may say only I may only think that's four that are worthwhile. Crystal may say three. David would say none of them are. Yep. Okay? So just because you're presenting doesn't mean they're going to get passed. Right. That's yep. true. Right? Well, mm -hmm. it's up for discussion on it. Right. So, okay. and, and, so, so some, and, and again, like if, 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 you, if you came next week and say, Tom, I think we have to offer $473,000 for the roof replacement, I would say, Jeff, pound sand. I, I just think that we have to discuss, I would, yeah. but before we spend $473,000, we have to discuss options on it. Should we do it that way? Should we borrow? Blah, blah, blah. Does it need to be replaced? Well, right, exactly. You got to start right. Yeah. With that. You know, so, so if you want to come now, for instance, I know that the glycol sprinkler replacement, we don't have glycol. So I don't know how we're replacing it. Yeah, that one needs a little follow-up. I don't know how it's been tested for the last 14 years personally, but that's another story. Some bigger follow-up. Yes. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. So, so in, in a rim, so no, I, I, have, I have no idea what a rim band replacement is. Do you? Oh, I have no clue. The school. David, do you know what I remember? Well, I know what they're talking about, but yeah. But 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 you need. Yeah, but I know you, what you're, you're yeah. going to ask. You're going to ask me to to to, uh, to bring forward to to expend ten thousand dollars for a rim band replacement, not knowing what I'm replacing. 
No, I'm not asking you to approve this. Uh -huh. I, I understand. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. If, if you're going to bring, we're, we're going to want to see dishwasher replacement. Crystal had a, a wonderful point two weeks ago about replacing a dishwasher, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, you did. It must have been a first. <laughs> <laughs> it must still be in that cup. But, but, she, but, she, but she wondered, you know, she was wondering about maintenance. Maintenance, and, right. And, yeah. and so someone's going to say, well, look, this is a 20-year-old dishwasher. I don't know, is it a 20-year dishwasher or a 5-year-old dishwasher? We're, we're not, we're still, we're going to still ask the hard questions. Yep. Now, now, if you ask me about the defibrillators, I'm going to, I'm going to say the defibrillators, what, what do we know about the defibrillators? That I'd say buy them tomorrow because they well, save lives. They say, right. So, yeah, and, and I'm going to say, do we, do we have one in the town hall? No. I don't believe we do. No. And, and I would say, well, why don't we have one in the town hall? So should we buy an eight? We should have one in here for employees and and then all the people that come in if something happens. I would say it's a I public. Mean, take a look at us. Who is the high risk well, group in town? Well, but, but, at the, but at the same time, does the library but we're not have seeing one? I just didn't say that. <laughs> does the library have a defibrillator? I don't know. Does the town hall? Does question. the does the town garage have a highway a defibrillator? But. But those are those are the questions that, that, that we need to ask, and and I would say that we should have we should have one here. We should we sh we, we absolutely should encourage our employees to, to, to take a CPR class. I'm not I'm not saying it's mandatory, but we should encourage that they take a CPR class, right? And that we should have we should have one we should have one in the library. We should have, but but if if so, if somebody's going down the street, you 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 would think that they would stop at if they need help. You would. They would come to the. To I mean, the you have building. them in the schools. There's lots of. Right. Places. The, school ha the school has a defibrillator. Yeah. It's we, right. It's right there on the right hand side when you enter. My office. We have them in the kitchens. But I guess what, that's what I mean, Jeff. So, you, you know, so you're still going to have. It's still. It's still going to have to be the mini. That's why I, you, you're right about. But how many can how many can you prepare to be presenting to us in an evening also? Right and. So I guess I uh, just want to confirm that that would be you you would prefer that than have the cap since these are originated as capital requests than have the capital planning committee do that vetting and say we recommend this. I'm still waiting for the recommendation. Absolutely, but I I don't have to agree with them. That's that's a democracy. That I may disagree. Okay, so present to the yeah, capital yeah. planning committee, have their sign off, then present to the select board, have their sign off on the item. But, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm on a rubber stamp. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, just so you know. Okay. I, Can I, I ask a couple uh, questions? Just, sure. So, <clears throat> it's a million dollars. You go to the layups. The layups are a lot of money. Can you package layups into one group? Ten other items, and then the second question. Who determines when the roof is ready to replace and how it's replaced? There could be grants out there for solar roofs. Now the green green shingle roofs, I don't know if you've heard of these. Yep. Yeah, the, the solar roofs. Right. If this was only twenty years old, I would hope it would have another five to ten. Well, because you your questions right are kind of ones that we had right off the bat too. Right. Right, which was right. So you right. gotta even Hit those first before you. It's an 18 year old roof right now. Right. Or somewhere in there. Yeah. And is it really ready for replacement? And if there's something down the road, if the green shingles are possible and it could be a grant, that pays you back because it draws it. it, it right, because you're getting energy solar energy. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, look, look where it is. I mean, but, that, but see, that, that, don't, that's a perfect example. It's like, okay, so if you go wanted to put back a regular asphalt shingle roof for 30 for for 30 year shingle it's going to cost 473 but for seven hundred thousand dollars we can put on a blah 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 we may want to fund the offset from arqua right yeah exactly and, and, and there's a lot of different funding mechanisms even just to do the roof as it is like borrowing you know, right. whatever right lots yeah, all the borrowing costs will be going up because there's at least four well, Fed but, increases yeah. coming that's this a, year. That's so. a, but that's the same but thing with a police cruiser, you know? Yeah, right. You, you, you may want to up. 
So, so you could go out and buy another car that's getting 18 miles to the gallon, which we learned the other night. It's not so much the, the mileage, but the hours that are spent with that car running, okay? Okay, now just go back one step and say all those hours that it's running, what, what about all the gas that it's burning sitting there mm -hmm. idle? Right, you get just costs, then you get you know emissions in the atmosphere. And Absolutely, a number of things to consider. Yeah. So, yep. Does that Those make sense? Costs. So yes. it, it and and of course you know you want to listen to what the the, the capital I, their 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 opinions are are greatly appreciative, but at the same time, you know you still. You know the exhaust removal system. Well, what system are you going to be using, and how much is it going to cost? Nope, well, I can tell you that Deerfield, they just their the South Deerfield Fire District just replaced theirs. They're putting one in it over to the South County EMS. So I would assume that we've talked to the same person, wow. see if it's working over there, and if something that we could instead of trying to go out and redo it by ourselves. Also, Hadley, they just put in. They just put that new station. What they put in there? Yeah. You know. Which all leads to why you really need this ARPA person to help with all this. Well, that, I mean, that that's... Yeah. I'll, I'll be curious to see what the... Cap, I think it's going to be hard for the Capital Planning Committee to come up with a capital plan until they know what not to spend capital money on because ARPA money is getting spent on. So that that's the only reason I'm, I'm trying to... Dream. I, I don't disagree with anything you said, but that's um, right because you're kind of trying to categorize things, so then you know, okay, here's what we need to focus our, our planning on. And I guess that's why you need to you need to they need to make a presentation. They need to get a presentation to us as soon as possible, so that we can start going through the list, so that we can we can finalize what's going to be ARPA and what's going. to if it's not going to be ARPA, it's going to be something else. Yeah. And again, let's not forget, we got a couple of years to do to do this. Yeah, to 2024, right? And 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 and, and, I, and again, from our thing, you know, when when I look at public safety, when I look at the six vehicle repeaters, I would say if you're a police or a fire firefighter, uh, and and you're inside of a building and you can't punch out with your radio because you can't talk, that's a concern. That that's that's a, a critical to me a critical path. I think the repeaters are a perfect example of what to use this on. I, I agree. You know? and, and, and versus and in versus the HVAC upgrades at the public safety may not be a a, a a priority one because we spent a heck of a lot of money with green communities monies over the years to try yeah. to understand and, and I understand Steve's part, but it's like I think I want more than one person. So we had this one person, we've had one person in the past or one company, and, and it seems it hasn't gotten it fixed right. I mean, how, how many, I mean, it seems like almost every, back even when your dad, I mean, you know, I've gone down there and rebuilt pumps myself. So it's, it's a long, it's a long process, Jeff. So I, I would see the HVAC upgrade may not be as important right now. And so we, we okay it we okay it in September instead of April. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's you know so but clearly we're gonna have an ongoing ARPA section on our agenda <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. But but again but again, you know, you look at the glycol sprinkler replacement. Well, we don't have to do that. Right. And 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 so I, I would like some documentation about what what's presented before we vote. Absolutely. Well, and a lot of the things too that you know, you just pick any item. You know, well, you got we got an estimate, you know, a rough estimate, at, you know, a year and a half or two years ago. We got to, you know, we have to get new estimates because of cost increases and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right, it's and always, I think we need to know: Are these one-time expenditures? And we'll use the dishwasher. We're going to buy a new dishwasher and it's going to cost $21,000. But is there now going to be a line item every year for another $500 for the maintenance contract on it? And, you know, we're going to get a new PA system and phone system and spend, you know, $30,000. Is there, 
a maintenance contract or a yearly expenditure to have that right, just the like the glycol is there some type of ongoing cost associated with this that still needs to be right factor I mean, your running costs. we have to pay them yes but we kind of need to know that they exist too right because it's not just a oh go buy five repeaters right you're done right and and i can tell you phones are phones are changing and yes. and there there no there and I know of a, there's a there's a place with thirty five thousand students just not too far from here that may be going with no more hard wire phones. So why are we putting a hard wire phone system in? That's op obsolete before you put it in. Well, I can tell you, my office we converted, got rid of our hard wire phones. We just use Teams now. See, yeah. that's all not that that's you know. Good and bad, but uh, exactly. right, right. I mean, well, the, the, but there's the, other technology right. out there than a hardwired phone and a PA right. system. Like, it, well, we've got we're on it. Really, everything here is on VoIP. The only risk to that is if we lose internet, we're in big trouble. Everything is cut. Yeah. Whereas the old days, you still had a landline phone. Or right. Something you still like had something phone. analog, so you can exactly. at least call out and. Right. But that's a societal issue. That's not. That's a problem much bigger than us. But it's so, so we've taken 20 minutes to say that there's really no easy yes or no vote on a on a on a thing. We're yep. we're, we're going to have to discuss them. Yep. That no, makes sense. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And 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 like I said, you know, voice the voiceover protocols. I mean, I, it's just you know a changing a, a changing world. If if you said five years ago that we'd be teaching classes, everybody would be at home doing Zoom classes and stuff, what would you be saying? Really, you're crazy. Right? Zoom was a PBS show when I was growing up. Oh, I knew. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Because I, I had the thing in my head. So, but yeah. Sure was it. I think you lost You want, you want a second for us? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, All right. What do you want to talk about next? So, so what I'm saying is, yeah, bring us some stuff. Bring bring us some stuff that, yep. that we can deal with. Well, I've been segueing into it because our select board updates are up now. Yes. So, right. and, um, and and like and, and like if there's things in the school that they like, like the like the uh, the repair leaks, that that's something that, yeah, that's. But I I think if you talk about the PA and phone system, I think the three of us are going to say, well, why are you going to why. Someone has to say, why are you still doing it that way? Well, we had some, yeah, we had some questions about that at the last capital plan. Yeah, well, you probably, yeah, you're gonna be, you're gonna be asked those questions, right, Dave? Yep. And and and, and David, I mean, David's perfect because his company's his company's doing away with that stuff right now. Yep. Yeah. And of course, if you got an EMP pulse, you know, it's gonna wipe out everything anyway. So who knows? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, exactly. yeah. All right, select board updates. Capital planning meetings, Bob. Is it actually, tomorrow night, Jeff? It's tomorrow night. It is. Well, I'm doubling down this week. I got Frontiers on Thursday, so thank you. Thank you. So I got the town one tomorrow, and then we have the Frontier Capital Planning meeting. Thursday. So is is Bill at the meetings? Uh, the the, the, facilities the facility. Yeah, he's at, he's always at the Frontier one. I don't. Well, he's always at the Frontier ones. Yeah. Yeah, at the Frontier. Yep. You may want to take him something. I'll show you downstairs on okay. the asbestos. Right. Yeah, and I think he and, and uh, Superintendent Modesto were both invited tomorrow night yes. to talk about the school. Okay, place. so yeah, we could talk about it. Tom I think he is coming tomorrow night because yeah. he asked me if I was going to be there. So. Although we're we're doing Zoom tomorrow. Right? Yeah, and I think I think the Frontier ones on Zoom too. I think. Oh, all right. They're on Google Meeting. Uh, well, that's true. They use Google Meet. For this, yeah. Zoom. Yeah. Teams, hey, you hear that voiceover? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, yeah. Come out of the blue. All right. Anything else, David? Uh, no. That's it for this week. Crystal. Personal committee tonight. Personal committee again next week. Hopefully, we'll good. Come up time of year. Something. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. We talked before earlier tonight about the senior survey. Again, I, I just want to say once more, you, you 
probably received it in the mail. Any but residents over 50 received it in the mail. You can fill it out the hard hard copy, put in a thing and send it back. It's very important. Try and again, you may not con consider yourself a senior, but that that's okay because because I know people that are 85 years old don't consider themselves seniors. But more importantly is if you answer the survey so that, and, and there are questions that, that are, are really important. It's like how, how do you, if you, if you want to live, stay and live in the community, um, affordability in the community, things that are important to you in the community. So please take the time. If you don't want to do out the hard copy, you want to do it online, go to townofsunderland.us. The Jeff has uh, put a red banner on the, uh, on the uh, um, webpage. You click on the red banner, takes you right to the survey. It takes a few minutes, and and but it's very, very worthwhile information. There it is, right there. Got it right there. Um, also, uh, we got a FERCOG meeting Thursday night. So, and they're going to vote their budget. We'll see what that does. Hmm. Tom, administrator updates? Nothing this week. Yeah, you, got, you got nothing going on, right? All right. Like dead quiet. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jeff. Anything else? I'll stop by tomorrow, just wake you up, just in case. You know. All right. At this time, not hearing anything else, I entertain a motion. I motion we adjourn. You're yeah. good at that, huh? I, hey, we all have our strengths. We all have our strengths. I guess I'll second. I guess. <laughs> Do we have a second? We have to. Second. Motion seconded. We have a made, we have a... Binding motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Without hearing any discussion, all those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye, aye. And Jeff, three zero eight o'clock eight o one. Declare us out, please. Thank you, John.